Hello and welcome to the E36 rear subframe product installation video. We already did do a product overview video. If you're interested, take a look at the video up here. Now we're gonna go over what's included, obviously the subframe, as well as the bushings already installed. Now on the rear subframe, you're gonna have eight of the washers, four nuts, four smaller nuts for the sway bar, four carriage bolts for the sway bar, as well as four washers for the sway bar. Now this will come whether you choose the factory differential version or the Super 8.8 version. If you opted for the Super 8.8 differential, you'll have four of these longer bolts, two of these medium length bolts, and two of these shorter bolts, along with four nuts and eight washers. If you opted for the factory subframe, you'll have four longer bolts, one bolt here for the front differential mount, two washers for the front differential mount, as well as six thin spacers and six thicker spacers for the control arms. Now something to note is if you had the Super 8.8 differential, they also come with axles included. Now if you're interested in the axle installation video or axle assembly video, take a look at the axle assembly video over here. Now first and foremost, there is a small modification required for the differential. It may not be for every single differential depending on the quality of the casting, but some differentials we've noticed that do have to have this modification. First you can see here is that you have to grind a little bit of the casting rib onto this side. It's relatively minor, made about an eighth to a quarter inch at most. As well as onto the other side, you also have to grind the casting slightly here. Here we made this a lot longer. You really don't have to go that long, go about an inch long. And it's only about an eighth inch deep into the casting rib that you have to make that modification. This gives it room on the spending on the subframes itself. Once you have the differential modified, we can go ahead and install the subframe first. We do recommend installing the subframe first, so then you have access to the bolts for installing your control arms. And once your control arms are installed, then you can go ahead and mount the differential. So we're gonna go over to the car and get the subframe installed. So here we installed the rear subframe. You can go ahead and torque the four bolts that hold the subframe to the factory specs, as well as the bolts that hold the bracket to 20 to 25 foot-pounds to the lower bracket. Now we're gonna be installing the rest of the control arms. So we'll be back once we install the differential after the control arms are gonna be installed. So here we're gonna be installing the rear lower control arms. Now we're gonna go ahead and install it to the apex cross member. However, the process is pretty much identical when installing it to the factory cross member. So first you're gonna grab the four misalignment spacers that look like this and install them onto the bearings onto the rear lower control arm. So once you have the misalignment spacers installed, you can go ahead and reuse the factory bolt, but here he's using the apex for a subframe. So we're gonna use the bolt that's supplied with the subframe. We're gonna go ahead and slide the bolt in along followed by one of the thick spacers, followed by one of the medium sized spacers, followed by the control arm itself, followed by another spacers. Now we do supply extra washers just in case if you have a little bit of clear, if you have a little bit of space and the spacers are just a little bit too thick that you can use a washer to split the difference. So then you can go ahead and toss a nut onto the other side and then torque to 30 to 40 foot pounds and then go ahead and torque to 20 to 25 foot-pounds if you're running the bolts from the Apex subframe. Otherwise, factory specs if you're using the factory bolts and the factory subframe. Here we have the true coilover style rear upper control arm getting installed onto the E36. Yep. And this is the same installation for the E46. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the misalignment spacers that are in the hardware pack and insert those into the bearings on the control arm. Next, if you're gonna be installing this on the factory subframe, you'll go ahead and use your factory subframe bolt. But because this customer is using the Apex subframe, we're gonna go ahead and put in the bolt supplied by the Apex, Apex engineered subframe, followed by a medium and thick washer onto the other side, followed by the control arm, and finally a medium, medium washer on the other side. So here we have the control arm installed. If you're using the Apex subframe, you can go ahead and torque this to 20 to 25 foot-pounds. If you're using the factory subframe and factory bolts, you can go ahead and torque that to the factory specs. All right, so here we're gonna be installing the trailing arms. Now we're gonna be installing our toe bracket uh, first onto the trailing arms. So here you can notice the orientation of the toe bracket for the passenger side. We're gonna start with the supplied bolt for the toe bracket, as well as a washer. So note the bolt head orientation and the toe bracket orientation, and this is to maximize the amount of travel that we have on the bracket. So here we have the toe bracket installed onto the trailing arm. Note the orientation and the way that the bolt is, and you're gonna go ahead and torque this toe bracket if you're running the factory toe bracket to the factory spec, or if you're running the apex toe bracket 
20 to 25 foot pounds. Now we're gonna go ahead and install this onto the car. Next, we're gonna go ahead and insert the misalignment spacers onto the bearings of the trailing arms. Next, we're gonna go ahead and mount the upper control arm to the upper mount onto the trailing arms. So when mounting the apex control arm to the apex trailing arms, you have these eighth inch washers that we're gonna place on each side of the misalignment spacers. First, we're gonna go ahead and put the bolt through to one side, followed by a washer and a nut to the other side. And then you can go ahead and do the same process with the lower control arm. And here you can go ahead and see everything is installed and you have incredible articulation. It touches all the way to the top here. And so you pretty much would bottom out onto the car's actual chassis than the suspension itself. Now, something to note, depending on your toe setting, this brake line bracket might get in the way. All you have to do is hit it with a hammer a little bit this way and you'll have ample clearance. Here we could see like it's super close and if depending on your toe bracket, if you're really far in, then you may just have to hit it with a mallet and bend the bracket a little bit towards the inside of the car. So here you can go ahead and install your coilover to the chassis. Now we're gonna actually uh, not install the coilover in this video just because this customer actually at opted for our full cantilever suspension in which the push rod itself is gonna mount here. So if you're interested in that video, stay tuned. But for this customer, this, this pretty much wraps up the installation of the rear trailing arm. So one thing that we forgot to mention is the rear sway bar bushings do come with the rear subframe product. It also comes with the new carriage bolts to be able to mount that as well as greasable sway bar bushings to make it for a more seamless install.